In July 1978, Sepeda Asafina left her Middle Eastern hometown of Tehran, Iran to finish high school in Raleigh, North Carolina. Less than eight months later, an Islamic revolution took place in her home country, and she chose not to return. Instead, she enrolled at North Carolina State University as an engineering student. After graduation, she spent more than 16 years practicing engineering before founding the CEPI Engineering Group in Raleigh in 2001. Over the past 30 years, Sepeda has established herself as one of the state's foremost engineers and business leaders. Today, this mother of two teenagers has led numerous public and private sector projects, and her firm is one of the most influential and respected in North Carolina. In this segment of the interview, Women in Technology series, Sepeda talks about opportunities for women in technology, balancing work and family life, and how her multicultural background has contributed to her success in America. Uh, of course, for females, having powerful and educated female role models are, are very important. I think because it gives you the possibilities. It shows that where you can go and how you could be more and do more with your life. So for me, that was the case. I always remember my mother telling me, which is, is kind of funny but to me and my younger sister, she would tell us that you must have a career. So that was the main, main thing that I remember being very young, that she would tell us that you have to be able to support yourself. You have to have a career. I usually have very busy days, so I meet with the staff, uh, look at the financials. That's one of the big parts of owning a business. The financials become very, very important. So I, I I'm always have to have my pulse on the, you know, the cash and the flow of the money is really important. And um, I'm connecting with the employees is really important. It's important to know who is in the office, how they're doing, what kind of projects we're working on. Meeting with clients is a big part of my day. Business development is a big part of my day. So I have various meetings, various community activities that I get involved in uh, through uh, connection that your work and your community has. I think they're not separate. I think your, your personal life, your career, your community is all part of a very connected circle. And that's what makes it exciting to me, that I look at it all as a whole and you know, try to do my best every day when I go to work to do something. Um, it depends on, I guess, uh, not depends, it depended for me on which part of my career it was. So my perspective today is much different than it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago. I have a teenage daughter who's 17 years old and I have a son who's 13. Think about it as you really are doing the best you can. It's not a perfect set of uh, standards that you have to follow. It doesn't have to be one, two, three for you to be a great mom and to be a very good employee and to have a lot of success. You can combine everything and you can incorporate that into your life. So for you as a career woman, you offer something different to your children. And I think uh, moms who don't work offer something fantastic to their children. It's different. We don't have to compete with that, you know, we don't have to try to fit into that mold. It's important that you really have fun with your career, to have fun with your children, to be present when you're there with your children because having that contradictory feelings and guilt feelings, it affects how you interact with them when you're with them. So be present wherever you are. If you're at work, be present there and do an amazing work with them and enjoy your children. And they understand. They truly understand. And for your, I mean, I have a son, and I hope that what I had to do makes him more uh, understanding and more sensitive when he has a wife and a family. So he understands that he has to do more, that he can share, and to appreciate that. And, and um, I think over time, the more women are in the workforce, it balances itself out and the expectation levels out. Because if you really think about it historically, it hasn't been many years that women have been in the workforce. So it's a kind of a con 
brand new in a way concept in the past 20, 25 years as the women have really emerged as being uh, executives and leaders in the industry. So this challenge has been new in a way. Almost 30 years ago when I came to Raleigh, I was not very excited about staying here because um, I, was, I came from a big city, Tehran was a big city and I really wanted to go to a big city. And the more I stayed here, the more I realized that this is an amazing place and the area has grown tremendously over the past 30 years. We have great opportunities, we have great schools, we have great places for uh, careers. Um, wonderful resources such as Girl Scouts of North Carolina. It's just a wonderful resource. So this is a fantastic area. I really think that um, we really don't need to go too far to get everything we want here from technology to schools to education and career. It's a fantastic area. Uh, Iran has a, a very old history and, and a fantastic culture. And for me, it was always being, uh, making sure my children are uh, aware of where their uh, parents were raised and born and their ancestors came from. And we spoke the language in the house. Always we spoke Farsi. Uh, both children speak Farsi. They can't um, read or write yet, but they both speak Farsi. Uh, we have, um, we cook the same food. We, we celebrate the traditions. We have them invite their friends over, for example, New Year. Uh, the Persian New Year is the first day of spring, the official day of spring, which is like March 20th. So we always have a small get-together and they bring their friends over and we explain to them what, what the tradition is all about and we celebrate and we enjoy and we also celebrate Christmas and we also celebrate Thanksgiving and we have really uh, shown them that, you know, every single day is about celebrating <laughs> something so if you don't have to uh, enjoy um, one and forget the other one. And I personally think it has helped me being from that country, has helped me with who I am, the um, various experiences that I've had with, um, you know, culturally, with learning so many things about, uh, you know, another region of the world. Of course, I think traveling is fantastic anyways for all the girls. I, I encourage them to go. Uh, and travel, but uh, just having that for me has been a huge asset and also has helped me appreciate the opportunities here. So I think that we need to just encourage girls and tell them that you have tremendous power. You have tremendous power. There are people there who could know you, that they could support you. And uh, many, I mean, there's, the world is full of opportunities. If you try to focus on the opportunities, you can see amazing things happen. And another thing that I really encourage everybody, of course, girls, is use your imagination. I mean, look at the, the past um, 15, 20 years with internet technology. Everything that we're using today is somebody's imagination. So the realities of what we have is really not important comparing to the imagine, your imagination of what you can achieve. So if you sit there and really try to use that and look at the world around you, everything we have is somebody's imagination. Everything that we have achieved as human beings. So I think that is the power, the power of imagination and trying to be positive and look at your potential is going to be the key to any obstacle.